um, this is another not fancy video um, of me trying to make this mask. I will show you how to make it. So basically, um, this is my way of combining two masks into one. Um, from the front, it looks like your regular pleated mask, but it actually also has a feature of a 3D mask, as you can see. From this camera angle, it has a flap for your nose and another flap to cover your chin. And it has a um, pocket to put your filter later and the nose wire. So some people call it 3D mask and some people call it like boat shape mask or octagon mask. Um, but pretty much all those masks I've seen, um, there are a lot of YouTube tutorials. Um, they pretty much requires two pieces of fabric, at least for the front and the and the back side. And if you want to make a filter pocket, you need another piece of fabric too for the filter pocket. And you'll know I'm lazy, so if I can make one mask using just one piece of fabric, I'm gonna do that. So this is why I've come up with this format and it works pretty well. Um, it only requires one uh, rectangular piece of fabric. So today I'm gonna try to walk you through how I make it, but please bear with me because I might uh, make some mistakes along the way because there's just some little steps um, and uh, I, got com I will probably get confused of which step comes first and which step comes last after so just bear with me as we go through it um, and by the way the finished mask size is about seven and a quarter or seven between seven and seven and a quarter it depends on the thickness of your fabric if the fabric is thicker it probably will be a little bit shorter but overall seven inches wide and um, like three and a half inches tall okay so Let's get this started. This mask only requires one piece of fabric. So I have one piece of 10 by 17 size of fabric. And this fits me pretty well, but um, when you make yours, you might adjust it according to your size. But overall, I find this size works pretty well for most people. So um, what I've done here is fold the fabric right side to right side and fold it in half. And um, the first step I'm gonna try to make is the filter pocket opening. So from here, from this point to this point, it's seven and three quarters inches. So I make a mark from the edge two and a half inches and the two and a half inches here. So I'm gonna stitch from this point to this point and skip this area and then stitch from this point to this point. Okay. skip this area and then start from here actually you do not need to back stitch here but it's my habit you do not have you to backstitch because we will be cutting off the area in a little bit anyway. So you see. So now we have opening for the pocket, uh, for the filter pocket. And what I like to do at this point is I use my pinking shears 
and to just trim off the raw edge so when it's being washed later you won't fray in the washing machine plus it just looks pretty you know I like the look of the pink and shears edge And then what you're trying to do next is open it up and with your nail open up this flap. Just kind of press it with your nail. Because the next step, we're gonna top stitch along this center line. We're gonna sew a line here and another line here. So that will um, close this two layer and this two layer will stitch them together. So when they're being washed, it won't lose its shape. So when we do this, you only want to stitch this side. You don't want to stitch the back side. So as we sew, you try to pull away the bottom layer and just keep an eye on your needle and just pull away this layer so you won't get stitched together. Just take your time at this step. It's just don't rush it. There's no need to rush it. And I'm using this edge on my presser foot to line up with the center line. That gives probably about like a quarter inch of space. Hopefully you can see from the camera. keep pulling away the bottom layer and make sure this fabric here doesn't get like sucked in on, on, um, under the presser foot it has happened to me before you don't need to backstitch because we're gonna cut it off in a little bit okay let's change to the other side Do the exactly the same step. Try, trying to make sure you can see it. Don't need to backstitch. Okay. We we'll turn it. Oh, hold on. My camera, my computer suddenly start to talk. Let me. Okay. Low function. Don't save. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's continue. So now you will um turn it the right side out. So this is going to be the opening for your filter. And then we're going to move to this side of the table. Okay. We've just created it, the 
filter um, pocket opening so turn the fabric right side out the next step we will move the opening down so the distance between the opening and the top of the mask we want it to keep it two inches so let's measure it briefly so good see this line here to the top two inches and then we're gonna top just keep that in at the correct spot and then we top stitch along this line and again at the bottom which I already did um, but let me just top stitch here really quick it's not too crucial you don't have to do it if you don't if you want to skip the um, this step but I just feel like it makes the mask a little prettier give it uh, give it a little bit more structure so I, I like doing that It up, you know. okay. You see, we just top stitch the top, and there is a top stitch on the bottom, too. <clears throat> okay, so. The next step is gonna look a little bit weird, um, but just trying to stay with me here, even though it looks funny. So with our ruler, what you're gonna do now, we're gonna measure one inch from the raw edge, and we draw a line. Do the same thing for this side inch from the edge and then draw a line that looks like these see so cutting like from here if about like a three quarters of inches from the top but like would be cutting from here along this one inch line and then here and the same thing uh, for this side too make sure you don't cut the um, the top layer and just the inner layer okay I know this is gonna look funny but uh, the purpose of doing this is to reduce the one layer of fabric for later when we make the casing so it's not as bulky because um, if there are too many layers of fabric plus the pleats um, some sewing machine it doesn't they don't they don't like all the layers of fabric you might break a needle or something like that okay so this is how it looks like Remember we just said uh, from this point to this point the two inches. What we're gonna do now is we fold down about an, an inch and a half. Right here. This is to create a little panel that's going to rest on top of our nose. So I will be stitching a line right here and the purpose of it is to hold this together and at the same time um, this line you don't want it to cover up the um, filter opening so just bear that in mind. You don't want to when you when this when you stitch this line it should rest on top of here okay so we forgot one step that's very crucial okay before we do all that I'm gonna put in the nose wire so let me show you what I use for the nose wire 
This is what I got from Amazon. I got this um, heavy duty, they're basically twist tie, but they're coated um, in plastic. You want to make sure the wires you buy, um, they are not paper coated because it, it's going to fall apart when, you, when you're washing this washing machine. So I fold the both end in a little bit just so they won't poke out of the fabric. And where is my fabric yarn? Okay, so I got this fabric yarn, a um, ribbon yarn actually. They're basically a knitted tube and I use this yarn to make um, my ties for the, the ear loops and I use the same thing to insert the wire inside just to add a little like push plushiness to the um to the nose wire which is perfect because it's just I can just insert it inside so and the brand of that ribbon yarn is called hooked this is what the label looks like it's very soft it's more comfortable than using the elastic in my opinion okay so now I will just insert this piece of wire Just my computer. I lost my screen here. So just bear with me. I'm sorry about that. Um, so if I lose the screen, I can't see what I'm doing on the screen. <clears throat> So now the nose wire is gonna go against the top, against that stitch that we just made. So we try, we're gonna try to find the middle point of the mask. What I do is I fold the fabric in half and just use my um, marker, just kind of make a mark. You open up, you see the line, and then you fold the nose wire in half Align the middle point <clears throat> and then mark the both in. So this is where our nose wire is going to be. So on the sewing machine, I'm going to start sewing from this point and then turn and then go down this way and then turn again and um, finish up. Before I started, I like to push the wire a little bit toward this direction so it's out of the way when I um, start to sew at this point and then when you're done here, you push it back so the wire is against this line and then you just sew it along. Let's move my machine in a little bit. Really okay. Let's see. Huh. okay yeah. Let's do this. I can't see my mark anymore. It's right there. It's pretty dark here.
maybe a little bit better so um as you sew make sure you just use your finger to push the wire against that stitch line just make sure it's still in the right position okay and you sew. Scissor. Okay. So now we have our nose piece in. It's really tricky trying to make the film without a helper. So. Now we can do what we just said earlier. We turn this panel down. Remember, we wanted an inch and a half. But okay. Now, in the next step, we want to stitch here about like a quarter inch. Okay, just right there. When you open it up, you still have the opening for the filter. It's right here. And then we're going to do the same thing <coughs> for the other side. So fold it down. An inch and a half, just like the top side. Okay. Just briefly measure it. That's good. Do the same thing. So we'll stitch it up right here about a quarter inch from the edge. like so this is the piece it's gonna be against our nose <coughs> and this is the piece gonna be hugging our chin is gonna be resting on top of here when we're wearing the mask later okay so next step is this little panel we just made you want to fold it up so line up the two edges <coughs> And you can pin it down with the clip or with your pin. Just kind of hold them in place. This side. 
fold it in half and then clip it. This is how the back side looks like, the front side looks like this. So the next step will be making the pleats. And usually um, <clears throat> with the pleated mask, I do three pleats. But for this one, I've been doing two pleats and they look okay. I think two pleats are enough for this smaller mask. So um, I don't really measure, I just eyeball at this point. So just kind of like, it's just use your hand to kind of... So it's probably like at this point. So what I do is I just fold it. I just use my nail, just crease the fabric, especially on the edge. Just crease it really well so you can see the line. So this will be the pleat for the, uh, the line for the first pleat. And then we do another one. Same thing, it's a good spot. Okay, same thing, we just use your hand. You can use the iron too, I'm just too lazy to move around <laughs> to go to a different room because my iron's not right here. Okay. So you can pin it down if you if you if you feel feel more comfortable about doing it, but you don't have to. So this is how it looks like. <clears throat> so when we stitch up the pleats, you're going to be stitching up here. Like from this point all the way down. With all the folds, stitch just one line here. So you won't be stitching here, but that's okay because the fabric, <clears throat> the, the folds are still going to be there. The fabric is going to hold the folds together. So we're only going to stitch like right here. Okay. And I'll be right back. I'll move on to the machine and I'll just, I'll be right back in a little bit. Just finished stitching up all my pleats on the sewing machine. So this is how it looks like on the front. This is how it looks like on the back. It looks kind of crazy, but it's all gonna be hidden when we're done. So don't worry about this. So what I like to do is I like to use my pinking shears and just trim this raw edge, just cut it close to the stitch line, but don't cut, actually cut the line. It just looks prettier that way. And you trim down some fabric. Okay, let's do the same thing with this side. If you don't have this scissor, I highly recommend you getting one. I really love how the edge looks. Okay, so. We are almost done actually. So the, f the next step is just we'll be making the casing for the ties. So what you would do is just seal this craziness. The, the, this piece of fabric we cut off earlier, this reduce quite a bit of fabric bulk. So when we sew, we at least reduce one layer plus all the pleats. So. And it's gonna be hidden underneath. You won't even see it. So we will be just um, rolling the, the edge in once and then twice. And then you just stitch it up. Like close to the fold line, just stitch up right here. And then you do the same thing on this side, roll it up once and then twice and stitch it up. And that's pretty much it. And I have one that's already done here. This is how it's gonna look like when you're done. Crazy bits underneath. And this is how it looks like on the front. And this is your uh, filter pocket. You just insert your own filter. Okay, so the final step would be just thread through the ties. Um, I have this little tool. It's actually, it comes with, when I bought those, um, how do you call the stainless steel straws? It comes in the package for cleaning the straw, but I find it, um, it has a little 
loop at the end which is perfect uh, for threading elastic or ties whatever material you, you want to use so you can use hair clip but it's probably pretty tricky or you can use um, if you have wires you can just make your own tool okay so what you do is you just insert it through the casing you just made it's usually one way or the other when you insert it if you feel like you can't get through just turn and try the other side and then you should work see my ribbon yarn is the same yarn that I used to um, for the nose white earlier thread it through this little tool I like to use this, I don't use elastic, but instead I use this ribbon yarn. It's pretty soft um, on your ear. And what I do is I just tie slip knots and it, that will make the length adjustable. So there's no need to um, for me to try to find elastic. It's pretty hard to find right now. So, okay, so what you do is you do one loop on one side first so tie the sleep knot on one side I will include the link to the graphic of how to tie a sleep knot so you can see it a little bit better so what I do is just do one side first and then we want to move it and just grab on to the knot and just pull your tie to uh, make it longer uh, or shorter okay so we did one side first and then you thread this end through this little loop you just created another sleep knot on this side uh, to adjust the length to make it shorter or longer just depend on your knee so this is the mask this is the top side with the nose wire this is the bottom side for your chin and then this is the filter pocket so when you store it you can store it this way and you see the little flaps or you can just fold them, fold them, and then store them this way. And your, um, pleating mask. Okay. Hopefully you give it a try and let me know how it works. Hopefully it fits you well and stay well. Thank you.